We're tracking pine snakes. So this is kind of cool. We came upon on the road a yellow-bellied slider laying eggs in the middle of the road. A lot of the times these turtles will utilize open areas, which in this case happens to be a road, just like with the milkweed, for lack of a better area. And they lay these eggs and just kind of leave them alone and hope that a predator like a coyote or raccoon or something else doesn't dig them up. They even will lay a fake nest. So a nest with just a few eggs. So whatever predator comes by will think it you know, hit the jackpot when in reality, the mother load is somewhere else. There's a wetland back behind us, and then these turtles, many other species too, will, will come up to the uplands to lay their eggs. So having not just the wetlands protected, but the uplands, the longleaf pine forest, the wiregrass, the sand hills, is just as important. So Ricky marked it off to make sure that no one you know, crushes the eggs, and hopefully, hopefully the eggs survive, hatch, and go back to the wetland. I record if the snake is above ground, if it's below ground. If it is above ground, is the snake coiled? Is it uncoiled? Is it actually on the move? Um, and if it's below ground, what kind of refuge is it? Is it a mammal burrow, a large mammal burrow, a pocket gopher burrow? Is it a tortoise burrow? Um, if it's above ground, is he in a shrub? Is he coiled up in wire grass? And then any kind of interesting notes. Sometimes we get snakes together, so we record that. Um, I walked up on a snake a few weeks ago that was actually in the, the process of eating a, a rabbit. Um, so anything like that, and then temperature and cloud cover. We're walking in the midst of these pines, but all these pines were planted. Originally, this property was covered in 90% of just planted pines, pines planted in a row. And you'll notice this is where the pine snake seems to be. So they took these rows and they broke them up. They basically cut every third row to open up the habitat, bring light in, and allow for this this vegetation to grow. Now that it's all open, the pine snakes just love it. And so it looks like we've got one. So come on, let's see what we can find. Yeah. Unbelievable, we've been tracking the snake, um, you know, keep finding them underground. And in this case, we observed the snake sticking its head out of the little burrow. And sure enough, this is a, a female, right, Glenn? Yes. So how long have you been tracking the snake for? When did you first put its transmitter in? Uh, last year around this time. Wow. God. And one thing to observe about these snakes, so we keep mentioning that they're, you know, fossorial, meaning that they live a lot of their lives underground. And if you look closely at the head, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's got this little scale that kind of curves back on its head and that helps it to dig. This isn't full grown, is it, Glenn? No, this is, but this is definitely an adult. Yeah. A pretty good sized adult. And how I mean, big would they get? They can get six to seven feet, actually. Dang, so. it's taller than me. That's crazy. I'm just like falling in love with a snake right now. Is this a <laughs> snake that gets collected? Are there a lot of people collecting them? Or? Well, you're really not supposed to collect. I think the, the statue now is you can possess one, but um, you're really not supposed to collect these Best at all. Best to just leave them in the wild, right? Yes, and they're not, you're not supposed to mate them. I know they're being mated outside of Florida, Right. but in Florida, you're not supposed to. Now, earlier, I don't think it's doing it anymore, but when you were first picking it up, I heard a noise. Yeah, this snake will hiss pretty loud, and it's just a defensive mechanism to scare something away. Would they bite? This one's been they pretty can't, friendly. Yeah, they can bite. A lot of times, they just try to open their mouth and scare you and, and do some fake striking. Um, but, I mean, any snake will bite. But I've noticed that all the ones I've gotten, they just try to scare you more than bite you. Wow. God, what a cool animal. Yeah. Their habitat is so important too. I mean, they need large tracts of land and a lot of that's being destroyed in Florida. Check out how this is wrapped around Blair's arm. They're constrictors. What they'll do is they'll capture their prey and wrap around it, suffocate it, um, and then consume their prey. And I don't even know what they eat. What do they eat? Um, Southeastern pocket gopher is kind of a okay. preferred um, meal, but also any kind of small mice. Um, uh, rabbits. Yeah, yeah wow. rabbits certainly. Rabbits. Yes. When these guys go down the pocket gopher burrows, it's so narrow they'll actually press the pocket gopher against the side. Wow. Instead, of, there's no place to constrict. Yeah, they just squeeze it against. So the wall. a lot of times you'll find these snakes pretty beat up from fights down there with the pocket gophers. Because uh, if you ever seen a pocket gopher, their teeth are very large. 
They're so strong. That's one of the things yeah. I noticed about it. When you when you hold it, you can literally feel the yeah. strength of the muscles. Yeah, they're very strong snakes. Man, I sure hope that they make it because this is as cool as it gets. I'm glad you guys are taking the time to learn more about them and research them and stuff. It's, it's really great because yeah. we need it. What a cool animal. Yeah. Wild Wander is made possible by the generous support of organizations that believe in the importance of the stories we tell. If your organization would like to talk about a partnership opportunity, contact us at info at macroscopepictures.com.